Today we're going to be talking about how to solve a separable differential equation mixing problem. And in this particular problem, we've been told that we have a tank that contains a thousand liters of fluid, including 15 kilograms of dissolved salt. So we've just got a thousand liters of fluid and into that we put 15 kilograms of salt and it's not sitting there in like a block, it's dissolved through the solution equally. We've also been told that fresh water that doesn't contain any salt is entering the tank at a rate of 10 liters per minute and that the solution is staying mixed evenly the entire time that fresh water is being pumped into the tank. So what that means is that we're not pumping fresh water into the top of the tank and the salt is settling at the bottom. That means that the solution is staying mixed constantly. Maybe there's mixers in there or something. And so the salt is always evenly distributed throughout the entire solution, not settled at the bottom or the top or something like that. So the solution stays mixed evenly the entire time. The tank is draining at 10 liters per minute, which notices the same rate at which we're pumping fresh water into the tank. And we've been asked to determine from this information how much salt is in the tank after T minutes generally, and specifically after 20 minutes. I've gone ahead and written a formula here that we'll need. It's the standard formula that we use in all mixing problems, which tells us that the rate at which the concentration of salt is changing in the tank can be modeled by basically rate in minus rate out. So the rate at which salt enters the tank minus the rate at which it leaves the tank. And it's important to know that each of these rates, rate in and rate out, are both the product of concentration and rate. So in order to calculate rate in, for example, we need to multiply the concentration of salt that's coming into the tank by the rate at which it's entering the tank. For rate out, we need to multiply the concentration of salt leaving the tank by the rate at which it's leaving. And that's how we'll calculate the rate at which the concentration of salt changes within the tank. We can write down a couple other things here. First of all, we know that we start with 15 kilograms of dissolved salt in the tank. So if we say that y of t is the function that models the concentration of salt in the tank at any given time, we'll use that function and we'll write a couple initial conditions. So we'll say y of t is our function. We'll say that y of zero is equal to 15 because at time zero, when we start, we have 15 kilograms of salt. What we're looking to find is y of t, our function, because we need to model it at t minutes, and y of 20, because we're interested in the concentration of salt after 20 minutes, so y of 20. So we need to find this, and we need to find y of t, knowing that y of zero is 15. So we'll attack this problem first by calculating rate in, and then by calculating rate out. For rate in, we know that the only thing entering the tank is fresh water, and it's entering at a rate of 10 liters per minute. Because we've been told that it's fresh water, and let's go ahead and say rate in is equal to, remember we're looking for concentration times rate for rate in. Well, the concentration of salt entering the tank is zero because only fresh water is coming in, and fresh water means there's no salt in the water. So the concentration of salt entering the tank is zero kilograms per liter. There's no salt coming into the tank when we're mixing in this fresh water here. The rate at which that fresh water is coming in is 10 liters per minute. So we'll say that the rate is 10 liters per minute. Obviously, it's inconsequential because zero times 10 still gives us zero, but at least we can see that the rate in is zero kilograms per minute. And with these mixing problems, keep in mind that it's really helpful to carry your units through whenever you can. Sometimes it gets confusing. In this problem, we've got kilograms, we've got liters, we've got minutes. But if we, if we write the, the units here into our problem, we can see that, for example, liters here cancel from the numerator and denominator and we're left with kilograms per minute and that makes sense as a rate of kilograms per minute rate of salt entering the tank so that can help guide us to you know what we need to cancel and things like that so then if we want to calculate rate out we're going to do the same thing we're going to look for concentration of salt leaving the tank and how fast it's leaving so we know that the tank is draining at 10 liters per minute so we know that's going to be the rate at which the tank drains here the rate out so 10 liters per minute the concentration we don't know exactly what the concentration is. We haven't been told specifically how much salt is leaving the tank at one time. We just know that the tank is being drained. 
And the way that we're going to model concentration is just with y of t over 1,000. We know that there are 1,000 total liters in the tank. We don't know exactly yet the concentration of salt and what the equation for that looks like. So we say y of t, the function that we need to find, divided by the total amount of fluid in the tank, 1,000 liters. And just like before, we put units on that of kilograms per liter. Now when we simplify this, we get the same thing as before. We get liters to cancel. We're also going to get a zero to cancel on each of these here. What we're going to be left with is y of t over 100 kilograms per minute is the rate out of the tank. Now if we plug both of those into our differential equation, what we get is dy over dt is equal to rate in, which is zero kilograms per minute, minus rate out, which is y of t over 100 kilograms per minute. And when we simplify that, this goes away, and what we're just left with here is negative y of t over 100 kilograms per minute. That's dy over dt. And now you may notice this is just a separable differential equation. We can rewrite this and instead of y of t over on the right hand side, we can say it's just y, so we get y over 100. And now all we need to do is multiply both sides by dt and divide both sides by y, and we've got our variables separated. So we'll multiply both sides by dt, we'll get dy equals negative y over 100 times dt. We'll divide both sides by y, and we'll get one over y times dy is equal to negative 1 over 100 dt. Now you can see all of our y variables are on the left hand side and all of our t variables are on the right hand side. At this point, as with any separable differential equations problem where we're trying to solve it, we just need to integrate both sides. So we'll integrate both sides of the equation like this. On the left hand side, we'll of course get natural log of the absolute value of y which is the integral of 1 over y, and on the right hand side over here we'll get negative 1 over 100 times t, and we have to add a constant of integration c. Now technically the way to add the constant of integration is to add c sub 1 to the left hand side and c sub 2 to the right hand side, and then subtract c sub 1 and you get c sub 2 minus c sub 1 over here on the right, but those always end up just getting consolidated into one single constant of integration c, so it's just a shorthand version to only add it to the right hand side. Now we need to solve this equation for y. And the way that we're going to do that is by raising both sides to the base e. So we're going to raise both sides to the base e like this. And when we do that, we're going to get e and natural log to cancel over here on the left hand side. So we're left with the absolute value of y is equal to, over here on the right hand side, we have e raised to the quantity negative 1 over 100t plus c. Well, we can separate those and say e to the negative 1 over 100t times e to the c. So times e to the c here, and these two are multiplied together. e to the c is just a constant, and this whole thing here can come out in front as a single c, and we just get c times e to the negative 1 over 100t, we'll just call it negative t over 100. That's how we simplify the c. The only other thing we need to do is get rid of these absolute value brackets. We'll say y equals, to get rid of the absolute value brackets, we'll say positive or negative c e to the negative t over 100. But the interesting thing about this constant c is that it can just absorb the positive or negative value here because we're going to solve for whatever value of c is appropriate and it'll get flushed out when we solve for that. So we really just end up with y equals c e to the negative t over 100 as our final equation for y. The last thing we need to do, of course, is plug in our initial condition. We'll plug 0 in for t and 15 in for y to solve for c, and we'll get 15 equals c e to the negative 0 over 100. Of course, this is then 0 in our exponent here. We get e to the 0. e to the 0 is just 1, so we get 15 equals c times 1, or just c equals 15. Now that we know the value of c, we can write our final equation for y, which is y equals 15 
e to the negative t over 100. This is our value for y of t. So the y of t question that we had here, how much salt is in the tank at t minutes, that's modeled by this equation for y here. And if we want to, we can say y of t equals 15 e to the negative t over 100. That satisfies that question. Now we just need to find how much salt is in the tank after 20 minutes. Well, after 20 minutes, we just plug 20 in for t. So we'll get y of 20 equals 15 e to the negative 20 over 100. That's the same as negative 1 fifth. And when we do that on our calculator, what we see is that y of 20 is approximately equal to 12.28 kilograms, which is how much salt is remaining in the tank after 20 minutes. So that's it. That's how you solve a separable differential equation mixing problem. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.